So Rusty made a video ranking all 308 weapons. A lot of you wanted me to review it. 308 weapons is a lot and would be much too large of a video for me to do if I did it all in one go. So over the next however long it takes, I will be breaking down his video class by class and fixing it and giving you an objective tier list in both PvE and PvP. For PvP, I will have several top tiers give their thoughts on it before I finalize the tier list. Everything was ranked with all kinds of different criteria in mind. How fun the movesets are, how effective they are against however many types of enemies, damage, range, consistency, just about everything down to how they look artistically. Meanwhile, all weapons were ranked with all different kinds of criteria in mind. How fun the movesets and animations are. So like already that like in my mind worst to best means like you're trying to be objective fun is not an objective like measure of something so i think it should be taken more of just what rusty likes yeah i'm not gonna lie this almost does seem like if you just put every weapon into a randomizer and then shuffled it like this is what you'd get <laughs> basically and then just put it in, in order that the randomizer came out at. Number 48, the Tree Spear. It's a big golden pointy stick. You can't exchange the weapon skill for anything better, and it has innate holy damage. But the fact that it's a great spear just makes it one of the most comfortable weapons to use. So much so that its setbacks and disadvantages mean very little once you actually pick it up and start poking fuckers with it. Number 32, the Serpent Hunter. I just didn't think this great spear was ever that good until people told me to use it in speedruns. So let this be a humbling reminder that your opinion on anything is allowed to change. Firstly, this isn't fucking armored core, so take your dumbass chainsaw and get out of PvP. Secondly, this isn't fucking Rainbow Six Siege. Go test out a new low-level build if PvP spam bothers you so goddamn much. There, now I've pissed everyone off. Mid-A scaling in strength means this spear should at least be looked at, even if you've dismissed it for being a gimmick weapon in the past. It has no surprises outside of Records Arena, and that's kind of the beauty of it. The reach is very okay for what it is, but the damage on even lighter attacks plus its hyper armor will have you feeling stupid for never considering it. Number 16, Siluria's Tree. There's a growing misguided stereotype towards holy weapons that holy automatically equals bad right out of the gate, only because it doesn't help you during the end game. But that unfortunately leads to a lot of people sleeping on 16-cylinder unaliving machines like Siluria's Tree. I think the most notable thing about it would be its unreasonably high amount of hyper armor on its unique skill. The beefiest part of the skill has motion values of 276, which also means the skill exclusively scales with how upgraded the spear is and not off your faith stat. In case you have no point of reference for how high of a number that actually is, fucking Giant Hunt has 220. Having your attack with an Ash of War be a motion value and not a bullet means that no, it does not scale off of how upgraded the spear is, it scales off of AR. So it scales off if you're whatever stats it scales with, plus the base damage, just like a regular attack. I don't understand that how he's reaching his conclusions to be wrong, but he seems to misunderstand how Ash of War damage works. Which, if I'm being honest, it is unreasonably confusing for how simple the rest of the game's damage is calculated. Number 10, the Lance. Notice how suddenly great spears have just started appearing as we get further towards the end of the list. It might be a bit late for me to just cram this fact in here, but part of the reason why great spears have continued dominating PvP is that the great spear attacks in your offhand get hyper armor. There is precisely zero reason for this, and the fact that this is still in the game at 1.10 upsets me tremendously. You've also got the counter attack damage, the spear talisman that reinforces block poke playstyles, and the absurdly long reach even compared to other great spears. Great Spears are not meta in PvP because they get Hyper Armor in the offhand. It's just nice that they do, but it's not a reason to use them because you're not going to be using the Great Spears in your offhand. If you wanted an offhand Hyper Armor weapon, you'd use God Slayer's Great Sword because it's faster. But the main reason that Great Spears are meta is the Power Stance and Crouch Attack because it is so fast with long range and high damage. The hyper armor that you get in the offhand is honestly completely irrelevant in the majority of Great Spear setups and is certainly not something that makes it meta. Number two, Mog's Sacred Spear. Back in the days of PvP where using Rivers of Blood was punishable by the death sentence, people eventually got caught up in their hopelessness and decided some things were just never gonna get patched, leading to the exploration of counter options. But among these, one weapon in particular seemed to not only push back against its tyranny, but flat out neutralize it. The total damage racked up by the full three hit unique skill combined with the minimal player effort it takes for them to consistently land is just the goofiest fucking 
thing I've ever seen in this game. It takes the multi-layered mind games of online competition that keeps people enamored in PvP and turns it into a dick-kicking simulator with no reward or payoff. I can't even say the base new game benefits aren't there because this thing single-handedly carries you through the Halic tree and stomps it into the soil it grew from. It's got a C in arcane scaling and with a plus 10 it feels like an A. Number 1. Vikes War Spear. In addition to being the only madness themed weapon you are ever offered, this spear has the unique benefit of trapping players in a shitty animation for 2 seconds upon being afflicted, and light rollers and bleed queens in PvP can now face the most literal interpretation of dying mad about it. It's a great spear, it has fire damage, it has madness buildup, it's extremely light for no damn reason, it has great scaling at plus 10, the skill's damage is determined by weapon level, it has a horizontal swipe as a heavy which gives it utility against crowds, it's an early game obtainable, pretty much every positive bullet point you've heard me list off for all other weapons in the video, this spear has in its pocket. Okay, so again, the Ashravor does not scale with weapon level, it scales with AR. Since I've already explained it, I'm not going to go into it again. Secondly, Madness is not that good in PvP, especially in low latency situations, which is hopefully what you're playing at. Third, fire damage is not good in PvP. It's okay, it's alright in PvE, but it's the worst damage type for PvP. Having fire damage is not a plus. It being the shortest great spear with the lowest damage and the worst stat spread out of all the great spears is what makes it the worst great spear. It's insane to me that he has it ranked the highest because it is just so much worse in every conceivable way compared to the other options. Okay, and for the moment that you've all been waiting for, my tier list. So first up I'm going to do the PvE tier list, and then I'll go through the DPS and poise damage calculations, and just a general overview of each weapon, and then I'll switch to the PvP tier list. Starting in last place in D tier, we have the Vikes War Spear. Following up in B tier, we have the Serpent Hunter, and then slightly above the Serpent Hunter, the Tree Spear. The reason Tree Spear is so low here is because, well, yes, it does get good damage, especially buffed with its Ash of War. It does have slightly less DPS compared to weapons like the Lance, which is an A tier. Lance can be buffed with Sacred Blade, Craig Blade, as well as Greases, and it can also have its Ash of War swapped, making it very versatile. But its optimal use is heavy, with Craig Blade allowing it to have very high DPS. Then we jump up to S tier with the Mogwin Sacred Spear. This is perhaps the only placing I agree with compared to Rusty's tier list, perhaps alongside the Serpent Hunter, although I would probably rank it a bit higher than he does. Mogwin Sacred Spear is very good. It is undoubtedly the second best Great Spear because of its Ash of War, but also the fact that it doesn't really need a lot. Even at level 125, is, which is what I optimized the DPS for, it's able to do good damage without any buffs because of the bleed effect and the fact that the Ash of War hits four times per tick allowing you to crank some impressive DPS numbers. Unfortunately, the recovery time on the Ash of War is very long, which does kind of dampen the DPS potential that it has. But if you were to be staggered out of the attack, or if you were to cancel the Ash of War recovery time, it becomes much better. And the best Great Spear is Solaria's Tree. I'll be honest, when making the list, I did not expect Solaria's Tree to be this high, but Rusty was right. The Ash of War is quite good, and surprisingly, even though this stat spread is kind of whack, you want some strength, some dexterity, some faith, it does pretty good damage, just on its own. Having super high hyper armor values and high-ish poise damage values makes the Solaria's Tree pretty good. So now let's dive into the DPS of each weapon, and for reference, I optimize this for rune level 125. Obviously, if you were rune level 150, it would be higher. I also did not include any buffs, 
outside of Solaria's tree charged Ash of War. I included Godfrey Icon to give it a boost because charged attacks are quite bad for damage per second. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the DPS. So for the L1 chain, which is what is optimal for Great Spears, the Heavy Lance has 606 damage per second, but when buffed with Craig Blade, it jumps up to a whopping 697. That's pretty good. It's not obviously as good as something like a Bandit's Curse Sword or another meta weapon, but it's respectable. Then I did Vikes, 500, and 89 on the L1 chain. That's not great. And the weapon skill is a measly 494. Although it does have 11 poise damage per sec 11.6 poise damage per second, which is higher than the regular L1 chain of 7.6 poise damage per second. Tree Spear with the regular L1 chain, we had a DPS of 601. And when buffed with the Ash of War, we got 662. So slightly less than Lance, and it is split damage, but on the bright side, it can be greased at least, so that's why it's slightly lower than Lance in the tier list. For Solaria's Tree, it has a DPS of 591.8. The Uncharged Weapon Skill has a DPS of 859 which is very impressive. The charged weapon skill, again, I included Godfrey Icon, is 715. It's not great, but it is better than something like Bike's weapon skill. But honestly, you should probably just use the regular weapon skill since you have a lot higher DPS than it, and you don't really gain all that much from the charged attack. Speaking of not gaining much from the charged attack, the poise damage per second for the weapon skill on charged is 25.9, so 26 poise damage per second, that's really high. The charged is 18.3, which is pretty good. It's obviously still a lot better than the regular poise damage of the L1 chain, but you're losing DPS by charging it. Up next, we have Serpent Hunter. This one surprised me as well. It has decent DPS. The L1 chain is 672 with the weapon skill being 647, which is very shocking to me since it is very slow. But it has high motion values, so it's pretty good. And the poise damage per second is a whopping 25.4. Not as good as the Solaria's Tree uncharged poise damage per second, but still quite impressive. And then finally we have the Mogwin Sacred Spear with a DPS of 587 on the regular L1 chain and factoring status a total DPS of 719.2. With the weapon skill, we bump that up to 657 or factoring status 818.8. That's pretty good, although the problem with using the skill is that you do sacrifice some poise damage Instead of having 7.6 on the regular L1 chain, you drop down to 5.7 using the full skill. If you guys are interested, I can update it with the heavy attacks, but I just focused on the L1 chain for this video. So when determining if a weapon is viable in PvP, we look at three things. The most important thing is the speed. If it's fast, it's gonna be good. Next is range. The longer something is, the less likely you are to be hit by something that's shorter. And then the damage is factored last because damage isn't really that important. Speed and range are. So if you're looking at a PvP tier list, you're gonna notice that the longest things are generally gonna be higher. In the case of Great Spears, they're all the same speed when power stanced, which is what you wanna be using them for due to the crouched attack the jumping light attack, and the jumping power stance attack, and the power stance crouch attack. So in D tier we have Vike's Great Spear. Obviously since speed is all the same, the only things that differentiate between the Great Spears are Ash of War, damage, and range. Vike's has the lowest damage, the shortest range, and it has the worst Ash of War of the Great Spears. So that's why it's at the bottom. It just sucks overall, and you shouldn't use it for PvP. 
If you wanted to use a Dex Great Spear, use Tree Spear. If you wanted to use a Faith Tree Spear, use Tree Spear. Bikes has no place existing in PvP. On very, very high latency, it can be of some use due to the madness effect since you're just not able to hit with normal attacks, but it's not going to be the case in 90% of the PvP scenarios are in, so it's better just not optimize for Vikes. Next up in B tier we have the Serpent Hunter. Like Vikes, Serpent Hunter is very short. It is the second shortest Great Spear, just in front of Vikes, and the reason it's so much higher is because one, the two-hand moveset is a lot better than the regular Great Spear moveset. It's faster. The second reason is that it is much higher damage. So normally it's not that big of a difference for damage. However, the Serpent Hunter just blows everything else out of the water when it comes to damage. Since it's pure physical damage, it only scales off strength. If you two-hand it, you get the two-hand strength bonus. So it benefits very well from Spear Talisman and Counter Hits. Whereas a weapon like Tree Spear might have higher overall damage, it doesn't benefit as much from Counter Hits because it is split physical and holy damage. And while yes, you can buff the holy damage, it still doesn't make up for the lost Counter Hit damage. And then following up in A tier, we have the Mogwin Sacred Spear. It is the longest great spear. However, it has slightly less damage than the others and it does rely on bleed to really boost its damage up further, which isn't a good status effect in PvP. The Ash of War is also quite bad and very easy to punish, but if you're able to read your opponent and get in a poise chip, you can prevent them from punishing you for a little bit. You still can get the full weapon art off, but you can get one or two hits off safely. And then at the top of A tier, we have Soldier's Tree, it is the strength counterpart to Tree Spear, except for it can't be buffed and the weapon art is unusable in PvP. That being said, it is a little bit longer ranged and when unbuffed, it does have a little bit higher damage on an optimal build, but like Tree Spear, it does have split physical and holy damage. And unlike Tree Spear, it is more holy than it is physical, which does dampen its counter hit damage and then in an S tier, we have the Lance, the only infusible Great Spear, and it is on the shorter side, kind of fitting right in between middle of the stack. But since you cannot change the Azure of War and it has fine damage, it's not good necessarily, but it's better than something like Vikes, you can get some pretty decent mileage out of it. And finally, the best Great Spear is going to be Tree Spear, and while yes, it doesn't have a good Ash of War, and yes, it is split physical and holy damage, it is primarily physical damage, and it's buffable, so you can use Drawstring Holy Grease to increase the holy damage even further. It is the third longest Great Spear, and it is holy damage. Holy damage is very good in PvP. It is the best damage type you can have. That's why Power Stance Coded are so good compared to something like Power Stance Carrions, However, it does have a slight problem in that it doesn't have a good stat spread. It requires faith and dexterity. 20 faith doesn't get you that good of spells, so it's more 20 faith to just kind of be wasted, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, you can use it pretty easily on a pure faith build and still have decent damage with it. But it is better on a dexterity build with that little bit of faith for the weapon requirement. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe, it really does help out the channel.